What do you know about comfrey? It's a powerful plant that you should have in your own backyard. Hi, I'm Kyleen and I'm the Provident Prepper. Comfrey is one of my favorite plants on our little homestead. It's easy to grow, it makes everything around it grow better, and it's a medicinal powerhouse. In this video, I'll teach you everything that you need to learn to grow comfrey in your own backyard. And I'll show you some of the great ways that you can use comfrey to make your family more self-reliant. Stay with me. Comfrey is a miracle plant that I think everyone should grow in their yard. All of the photos in this video are from my yard and my comfrey plants because I like to plant it just about everywhere in my yard because it has so many benefits. One of the reasons why I plant so much comfrey is because it is very beneficial in my garden. Comfrey flowers are pretty and they attract pollinators. The flowers start to bloom in late spring and they bloom clear through the fall. Bees, butterflies, and ladybugs, along with a host of other beneficial insects, love comfrey plants. Comfrey mines minerals in the soil. It has really deep roots that will go down eight to 10 feet, and it brings minerals and nutrients to the surface in the leaves. Comfrey is a fantastic mulch maker. I have planted comfrey in between each one of these sea berry bushes to nourish the soil and so that all I have to do is chop it and drop it in place and every year my soil gets richer and better and feeds those sea berries and other plants that are around them. Chop and drop is a technique that you will hear me use a lot. It means that you just cut off the plant and drop the leaves in place to build that soil. In this photo, you can see that Jonathan is demonstrating how to chop and drop. Normally, I would have waited another month for this comfrey plant to get taller and more developed before I chopped it and dropped. You can chop and drop comfrey between two and five times every year. Comfrey is rich in potassium, nitrogen, calcium, magnesium, iron, and silicone. When you chop that or when the plant dies back, it leaves those nutrients on the surface of the soil where the trees can have access to it. Comfrey is a wonderful asset in helping to retain moisture. It can create a living mulch even when it's not chopped and dropped. And those dead leaves build the soil. You can create comfrey compost where you just add your comfrey leaves to your regular composting process and add those incredible nutrients and make a very rich compost. Another thing that I do every year is make a comfrey liquid fertilizer. Now I just place the chopped comfrey in a bucket and I cover it with hot water and then I let it set for a few days or weeks and it starts to really stink by about that time. And then I spray it on the plants. I've been taking a class from Tom Bartels and in the class he teaches us how to make liquid fertilizers using a better process than the one I normally use. I will leave a link to Tom Bartels class and some of his information in the description of this video for you. Another thing that I use comfrey for is erosion control. I have an area, we have a walkout basement and that there's a real steep slope that goes down. Comfrey does a great job of controlling that erosion because of its deep roots and it's just massive nature. Comfrey is also a high protein fodder. Now rabbits like comfrey sometimes because they're a little bit prickly. They don't like it until it's wilted for a day. But as you can see, one of our bennies had no problem eating it even fresh. But it's nice as a fodder, it starts to produce early in the spring and it produces massive amounts and then it doesn't end until late fall. So when some of your other natural fodders have already given up or haven't started producing yet, Comfrey can really bridge that gap. Now, I wouldn't use it as the sole fodder, but I definitely am comfortable supplementing our rabbit's diet with that. And as far as the chickens go, they adore comfrey. I've tried to grow comfrey a couple times inside of our fenced in chicken orchard that we have, and the chickens just decimate it. They really like comfrey. So I've resorted to just growing it outside the fence, and then I chop it and drop it over the fence for them to feed them. Comfrey is a medicinal powerhouse and every year I make a healing salve that we use regularly in our family and that salve, the basis of it, 
is comfrey because it really does a great job of accelerating healing. The wonderful medicinal properties are not a subject of this video, so you can do some different research on your own with that, but just know that having comfrey with all of its healing properties is a really smart thing to have in your yard. I will harvest comfrey and dry it in an herb dryer that Jonathan made for me. I just lay out the leaves and leave them in there for a week or two until they're dry and crispy and I crumble them and I put them into a quart jar to save for later. Sometimes I will make a tincture with them and I'll pour vodka over the top and let that set for several months and then use the tincture off of it. But when I make my salve, I always use dried comfrey. And so that enables me to make the salve during the winter time when I'm not busy with the harvesting of everything else. I can just take the dried comfrey and my other dried herbs that I use in it and make the salve during the slow time in the winter. Now, when it comes to harvesting comfrey, it's a bit prickly. And so I recommend that you wear gloves. You want to harvest it when it is two feet tall. The roots, the flowers, and the leaves are all medicinal. Most of the time, I don't harvest the roots. I like to divide those and make new plants because it's just so easy to dry the leaves. The medicinal properties are concentrated in the roots. Now, comfrey will grow almost anywhere. You will have no winter kill up to negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit and it will thrive even at 120 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's hardy in zones three through nine. Comfrey is not picky when it comes to soil and water requirements. It'll be happy just about anywhere. It is very drought tolerant because those roots go down so deeply and it will adapt to most environments. It likes full sun and it will grow biggest and best in full sun, but I do plant it underneath my fruit trees and it doesn't seem to have a problem there, but if you do plant it in full sun, it will grow larger than it does when it has partial shade. A little tip about comfrey. Most of the comfrey that you will be able to purchase is called Blocking 14 Russian Comfrey. It is possible to purchase other varieties, but that one is sterile. Comfrey is a plant that is fabulous. Once you plant it, it's really hard to move and it's hard to get rid of. So you want to take care to decide where you want to plant it and make sure that's where you want to keep it. Some comfrey will spread by seed. And if you have comfrey seeds blowing everywhere, that could be a nightmare. So just check and make sure that you have a sterile variety of comfrey, unless you do just want comfrey to take over. Now, as far as spacing comfrey, if you are actually growing it in rows, you want to space it at least three feet apart. As you can see, comfrey gets very large. I like to plant comfrey around my fruit trees somewhere in the drip line, and it's great to plant them around berry bushes too. Comfrey is incredibly simple to propagate. You just dig up part of the root and then you split it. As you can see, it's early spring. Now you can propagate comfrey just about any time. I tend to do it more in the spring, but I have done it in the spring, the summer, and the fall and had no problems with it establishing. I've even mailed it across the country to a friend and the comfrey start did just fine. So in order to create the comfrey starts, I just dig up those roots and then I chop off the leaves on the top and I divide the roots because we don't, you don't need a large root to start a plant. The larger the root that you have, the quicker that plant will take off. So there's something to be said about that. But I chop off the leaves so that the plant just has a better chance of really taking off. Not that comfrey needs a chance on anything. Um, and then I plant the comfrey root like this, just horizontally in the ground, down four to six inches. Um, you want to make sure that they're about three to four feet apart because they do get very large. Comfrey is such a helpful homestead crop. I wish I was a better photographer and you could see this better, but if you look at that comfrey blossom, there is a giant bumblebee so happy on the end of it getting its pollen. One of my favorite pastimes is to go out and watch these beautiful bumblebees that our comfrey plants attract. It really helps with pollination throughout the entire homestead. Comfrey makes my soil rich and full of life. And like I said, it's a medicinal powerhouse. If you have a small yard, if you can just find one small place where you can plant a comfrey plant. It's actually very pretty. You could even plant it in your front yard as part of your landscape, but I would not want to be without a comfrey plant. If you'd like to know more details, visit the post that I wrote that this video is based off of. Go to the Provident Prepper, how to propagate, grow, and use comfrey. One of the videos that you might be interested in is Victory Garden Secrets. 
In this video, we share some important considerations when you're trying to grow a garden to be able to feed your family. Another video that you might be interested in is Survival Food Forest. We created this wonderful environment where we put those chickens to work and they are very valuable on our homestead. Check it out. You can pick up a comfrey plant at a local nursery or ask a friend for a start from their comfrey. All you need is a little tiny piece of the root and you are set to go. And now for the questions of the day. Do you grow comfrey in your yard? One of my favorite ways to grow comfrey is to use it in a healing salve. What are some of the uses that you found for comfrey? Comment below. And thanks for being part of the solution.